Um, hi, this is Ian, aka Tiger Mendoza. Um, I've been working on a uh, pure data script. Um, in the past, I've used an Xbox pad with Ableton as part of my live setup, and this is a new version of that uh, interface um, using pure data rather than GlovePy, um, which I've used before, which was great, great little program, but the support has been discontinued, and I wanted a new way of of basically doing the same thing. So this is my first attempt at using pure data and from what I've seen so far it looks really really interesting so I hope to do some more. Um, but it, there are, um, it is new, it is my first script so any changes please do uh, leave a comment uh, below or, or get in touch or, or whatever and if, if any suggestions for improvements I'm, I'm all ears. Um, but this is just a quick demo of my, of the way I've implemented it. Um, and and hopefully you can take that and, and do your own thing with it. I'd love to see what you do. So um, you can see here, it is just a, a standard wireless Xbox uh, 360 game controller. Um, it's pretty good. I, I have, I'm an Xbox fan. I have an Xbox 360, so they're pretty handy. Um, it's got two thumbsticks, so four directions each, it's stan a standard. Uh, they've got shoulder buttons, um, and I'm, I'm pointing these out for a reason, but you've got shoulder buttons. Um, what's really cool, these two analog uh, controls here, which are, uh, are great and can add for some fine tuning. You can probably already see some stuff changing on screen. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that, that's the pad. So my goal, and if you, you may notice if you see my other video, but my goal was to map the... Uh, eight directions, so the two four directional pads, to uh, individual, to the eight macros that are available in Ableton. Um, and so I can use each direction effectively independently. So that was that was the ultimate goal. Um, so within that, um, so I'll, I'll get on and just do a quick demo, just so, just showing you how to set it up. I have um, a, I use a little program called Loop, um, uh, Loop MIDI as a MIDI interface. Um, there are a few other versions of this or a few other equivalents out there. Um, again, support is an issue, but this one is also uh, x64 uh, compatible, so compatible with 64-bit machines. So, uh, and this is a, 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 it shouldn't make any difference, but this is a 64-bit Windows 8 machine I've got here. Again, I would love to hear any feedback, and the script should work with other non-Windows-based machines with a couple of tweaks. Um, so, so, yeah, any Mac uh, Linux users who use pure data in this kind of setup, uh, the same principles should apply. But anyway, this is Loop MIDI, uh, which I use for the MIDI interface uh, with Windows. Um, and here is the pure data script itself. So the pure data script... There's actually it's not uh, there's actually two. One of them is the main script, which is this one here. Um, one of them is this little initializer. So all it is is a series of what's called in uh, pure data terms bang buttons. And the reason is uh, when you're trying to assign um, MIDI clips or sorry MIDI uh, actions to these controls here, it can get a bit fiddly. Um, so what I did is set up this little initializer, so it will just send a MIDI signal through and um, Rather than having to use the, the thumbsticks to do the assignment, you can just um, select the. In fact, I'll show you. So, if I want to assign something that's new, I will clear this MIDI action here with delete. And say I wanted to redefine it uh, here, um, I would just hit this bang button and hopefully you'll see it being assigned. And you can do that for all eight and anything else that needs MIDI assignments. Um, on the to-do list is to do something is to add the note assignments as off on switches um, because but I'm not quite sure how to do that in script as I say I'm pretty new to pure data don't imagine it's too difficult um, but ignore these bits down here is effectively what I'm saying um, and I'm uh, hopefully that will get changed in the in a future version so that's assignments out of the way um, if I switch the MIDI assignments off I'm going to skip over the basics I'm assuming that most of you are pretty comfortable with uh, pure data, well sorry not pure data, with Ableton um, so the, when I main principles like MIDI assignments and um, uh, just generally controlling Ableton itself I will gloss over and there are loads and loads of tutorials out there so please do go look them up 
Um, so once I've mapped all the controls over, before I get into the what uh, Ableton does, what you'll need to do is um, you do need to start things up in a quite specific way. So I would open start up Loop MIDI, then start up your copy of Ableton. Doesn't matter necessarily which one it is. Um, but this happens to be uh, Ableton 9 Suite and once you've done that then start up Pure Data Now, when you start up Pure Data you'll probably need to go in and change the MIDI settings so again I've already got this set up but what normally happens especially if you've been, if you've been using different um, different configurations of MIDI you'll need to change the output MIDI device and to make sure that's set to loop B MIDI so that's useless, that's just the internal MIDI. Scott, that's just my sound card, you'll, so you'll need to set this as your MIDI output from Pure Data. Okay, uh, click on OK, and that should all work fine. Um, by default, this will be set to zero, so what you'll need to do, and if I get the debug window open, here we go. Um, so you'll see there on zero, it's set to device closed, when it's set to zero. If I set that to one, oops, the debug windows has appeared. Um, here we go, I'll put it side by side. So if I set that to one, that's uh, something else. If I then set it to two, you'll see it comes up as the Xbox 360 controller. And depending on how many controllers you've got in, how many human input devices, you may need to change it to three or four or six, or whatever. So it just happens on my machine, it's two. So. That's pretty cool. And uh, to make sure the whole thing is switched on, so if I have that without the X um, put in and I move a control around, you'll see that nothing changes. Oops, a little bit. And if I switch it back on, then you'll see, hopefully, the numbers on screen. You'll see, especially on the left there, you'll see some numbers start to change around, which is what we want. Um, which is cool. So that's that's all now so uh, if you want to get into the guts of how the script works then I can do that in a later video but for the purposes of this don't worry too much um, so if I minimize that I'll minimize this um, so if you so as I said the purposes were to uh, try and map the eight directions on the control pad to the eight macros uh, available here so going back to Ableton then, if I then just tilt that forward slightly and I twist the controls around, you can see that when I move that around the top four dials in the macro start changing, which is what we want. Um, and if I use the other thumbstick, so normally you'd hold, hold this obviously in one hand and you can get to both thumbsticks more easily but it's a bit difficult to do that and keep it in the video window so I'm doing it with one hand at the moment um, so you'll see the changing around so if I just push up ever so slightly that goes up and if I push down it goes down um, one of the tricky things I did implement in the um, it's a problem with all control pads especially older ones is the dead zone so it doesn't kick in straight away you'll see it takes a little bit and then kicks in um, and the reason for that is um, if you have it if you don't put in a dead zone it can get quite sensitive in the middle and you'll see it's yeah it just becomes really tricky to to map and, and use um, so that's the directional control pad you'll see on the and I've mapped that to an instance of tornado which I'll come to in a bit um, and on the right here you'll see that if I push the left trigger squeeze that down a little bit there's a high pass filter which will kick in and same with the right trigger if I push that down then that will kick in and it's all very fine tuned so I can do crazy I can really get some sensitivity and it's quite a range of control there which is really what I was after um, for some reason it doesn't go quite all the way up to 127 but that's that's fine um, so that's the analog stuff. Uh, in terms of digital controls on here, um, I've got the bumper button. So the right bumper button does a just an off and on on that control. Um, that's just a cool little DJ style break stop. 
which is fun. And on the uh, left bumper, uh, I can skip between the two different um, two different channels and switch them on and off. Um, so that's that. Um, I've also got these buttons mapped to the different um, uh, to the four different slots on each channel. So. And you can see there, there's my note assignments are exactly the same on both. So if I use the bumper, go back to, oh, there we go. If I go to the bumper and go back to the Amen break, I can then press this and it will play. The Amen break, we all know and love. And if I then press this one, it will switch over to one of my things, um, which is uh, all contained in the pack. And if you go to the download, there is a sample tornado. There's also a separate pack using uh, an Afro DJ Mac um, effects kit that he created, uh, and all credit goes to him for that one. I didn't pick that one. Um, so I go back to Tornado, which is a really, really cool plugin for special for live stuff. Um, I just open up this up here. With Tornado, you can map just they're just one knob um, effects basically, which is really handy. For you to set up. My script and a few of the other ones placing around the internet is that um, this in the direction to four separate controls for each thumbstick rather than different. So most of them just do zero to 127. You can see here it's that I've mapped that to two different controls rather than. Um, and okay, and do uh, the high pass there. Thank you.